Welcome, welcome, welcome to Million Dollar Sales Lessons, where I learned from multiple multimillionaires over the course of three years. My name is Marco Gray, and I am the owner and CEO of BF Elite Insurance Agency. Over the years, I've studied and I've watched multiple multimillionaires become successful in their sales industry. My intention for you at the end of this course is to allow for you to increase your sales no matter what industry you're in, whether you're in car selling, whether you're selling life insurance, or no matter what industry you're in, my goal is to increase your sales revenue. Now I do wanna add a disclaimer. Although this course is designed to teach you the rules of success in your sales industry, I do wanna let you know that your success is all dependent on your efforts. This course is also there to benefit you not only professionally, but also personally. By increasing your confidence, allowing for you to increase your sales revenue, and as well as teaching you, of course, the rules of success. So make sure that you listen, listen, listen very, very closely and watch each video in this module all the way through. Watch it one time all the way through, then I want you to watch it a second time. The second time, take notes, and I also have listed homework, and I also added some questions at the end of each module. That will help you take in each lesson and allow for you to soak each lesson in to apply it in your everyday life. Anyways, welcome to my million dollar course, and I can't wait to see you at the top. Rule number one, make sales goals. <laughs> Man, so I remember when I first started selling. So I have to say, uh, when I turned 18, after a couple months, that's when I first started actually getting into locked in into selling. But those first three months of me selling was terrible. I'm not gonna lie, it was super terrible because I was super frustrated. One thing I can say that caused that frustration was because I had no aim or any vision as to where I was going. I didn't know where I was going at all. In each call I got on, I just got on the call, just excited to be on a sales call in the beginning until I wasn't making any money. So I remember it was this one particular day where I literally was, I had maybe 10 calls lined up and I didn't sell anything that day. And I got to my last call and this person hung up on my face and I got so mad that I literally threw my phone and started cussing at the wall. <laughs> I started cussing at the wall. Can't you believe that? And my uncle came in and he was trying to figure out what the frustration was about. And I remember I lost it. And I was going through things personally and it affected my drive and my performance. And one thing my uncle asked me was, Marco, do you have any goals? And I looked at him like I'm looking at you right now. And I told him, no, I don't have any goals. And I remember when he told me that I literally sat up that night and I made my goals and it was almost as if my life has shifted. And until this day, I have sales goals for my annual income, my monthly income and my weekly income. And I'm telling you this because at the end of the day, if you want to be successful and you wanna go somewhere, you have to see where you're going. Because there's gonna be a lot of distractions in life. There's gonna be a lot of things that come up in life. But at the end of the day, if you know where you're going, nothing can stop you. So the number one step is that you have to set your goals and determine the price that you're gonna pay to achieve those goals. Rule number two, know your product. So I remember, I would say my first couple days of actually selling, where I wanted to give up and start another career. <laughs> I wanted to give up and go to college and live like everybody else and do what everybody else was doing. And I'm gonna tell you why. I remember my first selling day and I had a schedule full of clients. When, I'm saying, when I say I had like 10 clients that day and I couldn't service any of them because they didn't believe what I was selling. And that was because I was super nervous on each call I got on and I couldn't sell anything. I was so nervous and I used to stumble over every single word. The clients used to be like, well, Marco, I, I thought you were a good seller. I thought you were this, this amazing seller. No, I was not good at all. They literally got off the call and complained to the company. <laughs> it was terrible. It was truly terrible. I would say my first year in selling was terrible, but my first couple of days, I wanted to give up. And that was because I didn't know my product. So a millionaire once told me 
that the reason why I wasn't a good seller, the reason why I lacked confidence when I got on my calls was not because I had no experience in selling. That may have been a portion of as to why I, was, I wasn't a good seller, but the main reason why I wasn't a good seller was because I didn't know my product. So no matter what industry you're in or what, what type of sales you're in, you have to know your product and believe in it wholeheartedly. And that will change your whole trajectory of your sales career. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you truly know what it is that you're selling? And let me ask you another question. Do you own what you sell? Because I'm gonna tell you something, if you don't own what you sell and you don't know what it is that you're selling, I'm gonna be honest, you're not gonna be successful in this industry. So the takeaway of today's module is that just by being knowledgeable about your product and knowing what it is that you're selling, that will increase your sales significantly. Rule number three, learn to overcome any objections. Whew. So I remember a time where my sales were going smoothly and then out of nowhere, it just declined like this. And I just couldn't figure out why. And it came to a point where I had to have somebody listening on my call. So I was fortunate enough to have a millionaire seller, a successful seller in this particular industry tell me why I was not selling at the level that I should have been selling. And that was simply because I wasn't overcoming the objections that my clients were throwing at me. So some of y'all that are watching this course, y'all may be experienced sellers, y'all may be sellers that are just getting into the groove of selling, but I want you to know these objections that I am going to reveal to you today are going to change your sales career if you can use these tools and overcome them in your sales call. Because at the end of the day, in order for you to overcome an objection, you must first learn what the different type of objections are that are out there and learn how to solve those objections when they come up. Here are common objections that you deal with when making a sale. So objection number one is unspoken objection. Now this objection is where you, know, you have your customer and they have concerns that they have not voiced to you yet. The best way to handle an objection like this is to ask your clients questions, deep, meaningful questions to uncover and reveal those problems that you have the solution to solve. So objection number one is unspoken objections. Now these are common objections where your customer has concerns that they have not voiced to you yet. So the key to this is to ask questions and listen more than you're talking. And this will reveal the concerns that your customers have not voiced to you yet. Objection number two is excuses. Sometimes you're gonna have clients that are gonna make up reasons to avoid buying what it is that you're selling. So the main overall objective um, of doing this is to be understanding. So be understanding and pay attention to your client. So the next time that your client has a concern or is making up an excuse, tell them this phrase. My other clients have had the same issue until they found out that, and so on. This shows that you are listening and paying close attention to them and being understanding of their problem or the excuse that they're having. Objection number three is malicious. These are unhappy and just mad customers that come to the call just mad. And there's nothing that you've done wrong, but they are upset as something else that has nothing to do with you. And this is how you deal with those type of clients. You remain calm, confident, and you remain asking questions to uncover their needs. Objection number four is request for information. This is probably the best objection because this shows that your clients are interested. The best way to handle this type of objection is by knowing your product and by answering those questions accordingly. Objection number five is the show off. These are simply clients that come to the call and act like they know more than you do about your profession. The best way to handle these type of objections is to be impressed. Be impressed by those clients. Don't battle with them. Be impressed and congratulate them and applaud them for knowing the knowledge that they know. So by doing this, this will put your client at ease and allow for you to go for that sale. So number six is personal objection. This comes from you over talking and spending a lot of time talking about the product rather than trying to figure out your customer's needs and giving them what they need. 
So the best way to handle this objection is to speak less and allow for your customer to talk more. Ask meaningful questions that will allow for you to make the sale. So objection number seven is factual objections. These are clients that you, you're towards the end of the sale, but the client wants to know a little bit more before they actually make that buying process. They wanna ask a little bit more questions just for reassurance. The best way to handle this objection is simply by answering their questions and making sure that you reassure them of your product. And this is why it's so important for you to know what it is that you're selling. So objection number eight is general sales resistance. At the end of the day, your client will not buy from somebody that they don't feel like cares about them. Make sure that you spend the first, I would say five to seven minutes building rapport with your client. Don't speak about the product at all. Build rapport with your client. Ask them where they work, what they do for fun, where they live. Ask them general questions about themselves and build rapport. Rule number four, minimize what you say. Whew. One of the biggest, biggest mistakes that I have ever made in my sales career was speaking way too much on my sales calls. I remember a time where uh, me and my uncle, we were actually on the phone together and I was, I was the one leading the insurance call and he was just sitting there listening on the call. And I remember when I was just saying too much on the call and the client was uninterested. She didn't care that my uncle was there. <laughs> that didn't matter. She just knew that I was speaking way too much and I did not pay attention to what she wanted and what she needed. And that's one of the biggest mistakes sellers make in any industry that they're in, is that they're speaking way too much more than their clients. And that's terrible. We were made with two ears and one mouth for one reason, <laughs> for a reason. Remember that, we were made, we, this, was, this was for a reason. So make sure that you listen more than you talk. The best way to go about this is by asking your clients meaningful questions. They will do all the talking and they will teach you how to sell to them. That is simple, it's the simplest way to do it is by asking your clients meaningful questions. So just to recap everything on the short module, don't talk yourself out of a good sale. Don't do that. At the end of the day, you need to ask your clients genuine, meaningful questions that will uncover your client's needs. That way, you can provide them with a solution. Rule number five, build trust. People don't care what you know until they know that you care. This was something that I was told by a highly successful recruiter and it stuck with me to this day. You may have big money goals, big aspirations. You may want that Ferrari. You may want a house. You're gonna get that, but it doesn't matter to the client that you're selling to. You have to genuinely care for your client. And by genuinely caring for your client is by building rapport in the beginning of your sales call. Now I can tell you, building rapport is probably one of the most important things of your sales call because people only buy things for three reasons, from people they know, people they like, or people they trust. By building rapport, you allow for people to build trust with you. And another way that you're gonna build trust with your client is also by asking meaningful, genuine questions. So build rapport in the beginning of the call and make sure that you're asking genuine questions that allow for you to understand your client's needs. And here are a couple topics that you can talk about in the beginning of your sales call to build rapport with your clients. And that is talking about your client's job, what their favorite hobbies are, and their family. So to recap this module, the most important thing to do on your sales call is to build rapport. Because again, people don't buy from people they don't know, they don't like, people they don't trust. Rule number six, the power of positive thoughts. So this right here is probably one of the most important things that I have learned to improve myself and my self-confidence before I get on a sales call. And I learned this from none other than Bob Proctor. One thing that you can do in a practice that I had to learn for myself is to create a positive mental image before you get on a call. So before you get on a call, I want you to practice something. Practice a silent meditation where you visualize yourself on a successful call. Visualize yourself closing the cell. Visualize yourself talking and, and asking the right questions. 
and this will prepare your mind before you get on that call. I want you to remember something. The better you feel about yourself, the better you will perform. So make sure that you feel good before you get on any sales call. At the end of the day, life happens. Unfortunately, things happen in our life that can make us feel depressed, can make us feel sad, and can make us feel all sorts of things. But at the end of the day, if you want to be successful, you can't mold to life, you have to let life mold to you. In order for you to create the success that you want, you have to create the success for yourself and your mind in order for you to go out and achieve it. Another way that you can make yourself feel better before a sales call is by doing positive affirmations. This will allow for you to activate positivity in your subconscious mind because at the end of the day, when you get on that sales call, you're flooded with some negativity, with things in your past, things that are going on in your life. You're flooded with all sorts of thoughts, but this can allow for you to focus and focus on positive, self-improving thoughts. So to recap today's module, what I want you to do is before you get on a sales call, visualize yourself closing the sale. Before you get on a sales call, speak positivity in your mind before you get on that call. Because at the end of the day, the better you feel about yourself, the better you can perform and the better sales you'll do. Rule number seven, follow leaders. Man, 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 it was a proud, proud moment. And I remember it was towards the end of my first year of selling and I had one of my clients tell me that I sounded just like my uncle on my sales call. And when I say that that literally boosted my confidence, it did, but it was not an accident. I made it my goal when I first started to sell to make sure that I did what my uncle was doing. It sounded crazy enough, but I literally would, when my uncle would, would walk and how he would talk on the phone and how confident he would sound, I would try to imitate and do exactly what he did. So what I want you to do is find the leaders that are in your industry and do what they're doing. Follow their advice. There's YouTube out there. You can literally scroll on YouTube. You don't have to be in their presence to take in the knowledge that they have. So one of the things that really helped me was building a sales persona. So I would identify the three people in my industry that were successful and I would study them and I would try to speak how they spoke, do what they did, have the confidence they had, and it paid off. So just to recap this module, at the end of the day, success is not something that fell out of the sky and that you can just, you know, do without actually studying it. You have to do what other people have done and are doing in order for you to have the same results. So I'm not saying don't be innovative, but if there's a blueprint already out there that works, why not follow it? Now I can't close out this class without giving a big shout out to my uncle uh, and my mentor. Now, I have to say that my uncle has paid the price of success and it has been clear for the last three years that I have been living with him and I've seen him work and I've seen what he's done. He has paid the price of success. And what I mean by that is, is that he works hard every single day. See, before I lived with him, I didn't have the work ethic that matched the success that I wanted in my life. One key thing when it comes to selling or when it comes to business in general is that you have to start early, work a little harder and stay a little later. That's one thing my uncle has told me through and through and I still apply that to this day. And there was one thing about my uncle where there were countless days where he would wake up super early and work super late in the evening, just working. And he did this for pretty much seven days a week and with no days off and it truly showed me and it was a blessing to see that in order for me to have success i have to match the work ethic to the dream that i want so to recap this short module i want to end this out with a quote my uncle told me working eight hours a day is for survival majority do that anything over that is for success now go out there and apply this and go out there and work hard each and every day on your craft. And I promise that you will create the future that you desire and that you deserve. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching to the end of today's class. I hope that you all took a lesson in, or took a few lessons in, but I really, really appreciate you for watching this and tuning in. Again, like I said in the beginning of the video, there is some homework at the end of each module. Once you've watched it one time all the way through, watch it again, take some notes, and complete the homework below this module. Anyways, I wish you nothing but prosperity, success, and abundance in your life, and I hope to see you all at the top.